coming up today on the Conversations podcast. You're kind of a big deal. I just looked it up. You've got 141,000 followers. That's wow. I, I am assuming they're all bots, um, <laughs> except for my dad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Ainsley. Welcome, Ainsley. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Dawn. So I, people ask me all the time, like, how do you find your guests? What, how do you go about? Well, Ainsley, I was just on Instagram, on my Instagram, and I started seeing these amazing, hilarious drawings popping up with all these funny little quotes. And it was totally my sense of humor. And I was like, I have got to meet the person behind this. So here she is. Here is Ainsley, all the way from Long Long Island. <laughs> oh, no, originally from Long Island. I got out of there pretty quick. But um, did you really? Yeah, yeah I'm in I'm in upstate New York, which is like Long Island, uh, only with less hairspray and no freeways. <laughs> so, yeah, I have always wanted to go there for during the fall and see the leaves change. That's on a bucket list for sure. I've heard it's gorgeous, but anyway, it's pretty. There's a lot of meth, but uh, <laughs> but the foliage covers the meth houses very well. <laughs> sure, you get there at peak. Yeah. Okay. So I just looked this morning and as of this morning, you have 141,000 followers. When did you notice your numbers just start skyrocketing? Because that's a lot of people. Uh, again, I think that they're all just bots except for my dad. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. I, um, I'm pretty adverse to social media. Like I don't, I don't have a personal Facebook um, or personal oh. like Instagram. I, I just find it to be very stressful and for, for my mental health, it's just, it's just better to, to not. Um, but I've always drawn and, and done crappy drawings and, um, my friends during COVID were like, can you draw my pets? Cause it's hilarious how terrible you do this. And I was like, sure. <laughs> and, and then they were like, you have to put this on the internet so everybody could see how bad they are. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. And, um, and I just, you know, I, I guess over time, um, People were like, these are awful. And I was like, yes, yes, they are. <laughs> I, I guess that more people were like, wow, this person's really bad at this. I need to see how how much moxie they have to put something so terrible on the internet. I love them. That's what I love about them. And honestly, okay, so full disclosure, when I was going through a, a kind of a bad time in my life, I resorted to drawings and it was so therapeutic it made me laugh so hard and they were terrible too I am not not like artistic like beautiful <laughs> murals like actual just terrible drawings and Girl, I would put them laugh on the and... put them on the internet I'm telling you <laughs> it. um yeah it, it is very therapeutic I'm sorry that you went through a hard time but but definitely making art helps be weird and make art yeah. So what, is that what happened? Or um, cause I, <laughs> is it anxiety? And I just, they hit me on the butt and to get me to start breathing. And I just was like, I am offended and now I feel <laughs> and then from there on out. Um, no, it's, it's, it's been a bad time since, <laughs> since I arrived. Um, yeah, I mean, I was obviously COVID. I, COVID was great for, for me because I don't, um, I have like agoraphobia and anxiety and uh, tremendous social anxiety. And I'm just very awkward. So when they were like, Hey, lockdown, I was like, cool, cool. I don't have to see anybody ever. Um, yes. And that allowed me to, to really like, you know, draw all day long. By the way, what you hear in the background is my dog snoring. If your microphone picks that up, that is a chihuahua. Yeah, it, it, he's snoring loudly. He sounds like a buzzsaw. But anyway, um, yeah, so during COVID, I just started drawing more and putting them on the internet. And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a great time about the stuff that that had affected me or was still affecting me. And and you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go away. So yeah, well, it, but it's so relatable. And, and I like, I've heard so many people say that they just thrived during COVID. They loved it. They loved not having to go anywhere, do the small talk, interact with people that they knew and didn't like, or just, it was perfect for the introverts that didn't, didn't want to be out there. Um, but I think it's awesome that something great came out of it for you, just that you really went with it and just started posting things out there because that took a lot of guts. I mean, it it 
I think it takes more guts to have a personal Instagram or whatever and be like, this is my vacation at Disney because like, you know, like people you actually know and interact with in the world can see that and, uh, and judge that or, um, you know, you can feel the pressure to, to compete with the people that you're following. Yeah. Wherein for, for me, it's like, I'm bad at this. I don't care. And, and it hurts my heart that other people, um, you know, go through m- mental health struggles and mm-hmm. can identify with those things. But, um, but it's, you know, I don't think it takes much guts to just, to just be weird and, and, and put it out there on the internet. You know, it could, go, it could all go away tomorrow. You know, I, yeah. I recognize that like meta can get, you know, blasted out of the orbit by some sort of satellite and everything goes down and we're all analog again. And, and then there's no followers. Right. And uh, right. you'll be making junky drawings um, with or without followers. Well, okay. So speaking of followers, you know, I was thinking about like, I love to laugh. I love stand up comedians. I just creative people that think outside the box. That's all my jam. And do you have to sit there and second guess what you put out there? Like, do you worry, oh, I'm going to offend a certain group of people? Or do you just throw it out there and just say to hell with it? It's whatever it is. That's, oh, man, that's a great question. Um, I definitely second guess, like, dick jokes. Um, <laughs> like, things like that where I'm, is this too far? Is this too, is this too much? Right. Um, but I usually go with go with my gut and put it up there and and, you know, who cares if nobody likes it with regard to offending people? I, you know, I feel like I come from a pretty privileged place to even be saying like stuff like, wow, COVID was great for me. You know, it, it was not yeah. great for, for the majority of people and, uh, and to be, you know, in America and to be sitting in my little home and getting checks from the government and drawing pictures like that's, I'm pretty lucky. And, uh, right. I don't want to put anything out there that would hurt someone's feelings, but at the same time, um, I think that getting your feelings hurt is a part of, of the experience of, um, ingesting art. So I don't want to be like a troll or offensive. I do recognize that sometimes, um, people can get hurt and just, and just listening to people. I mean, I've had, I've had messages mainly on Tumblr, um, just accusing me of, of different things. And, and I listen, like I want to, I want to do better. So if I do offend somebody, um, Sure. Like, like come in my DMs doesn't mean like that I will necessarily pivot, but it would help me to understand. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you that if you get a lot of people that, that send you private messages, either, wow, this was great. I needed this today. Thank you so much for putting this out. Or, I mean, do you get a lot of feedback? Uh, my DMs are a mess. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If anybody, if anybody hears this, who has messaged me and is like, this B word doesn't respond. Like I it's, it's in part because it's stressful to even look at my DMS, but um, as I think it is for anybody on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I've, I've definitely, um, I've definitely dealt with, with people with very fair criticisms. I've deleted posts before. um, And then I've dealt with stuff where I'm like, wow, that, (laughs) that seems a little, a little out there, a little strong of a response to a really (laughs) doodle (laughs) <laughs> that has a butthole on it right really that angry um but uh, yeah I mean ma- the majority of people I think um who resonate with with any sort of uh mental illness content or uh you know just sort of subversive art are not gonna like, their feelings have already been hurt by life you know yeah exactly a fight and I, I you know I'm not political or anything like that so. Yeah, I know. And I that's what it's so I don't know. I just wish sometimes that people would just relax. I mean, because it is if it's offensive, you know, look the other way. Don't watch the show on TV if you don't like it. You know, if you think that this certain comedian is offensive, don't listen to him. I mean, we do have options here, especially on social media. So I think people can get a little too sensitive. Um, you're not out there to intentionally hurt. You're just trying to make light of things that can be kind of hard. Exactly. And I think that's great. That's if you don't laugh, you'll cry I always say that if you don't make a joke about it it'll destroy you um yeah absolutely and and you know there are so many battles that do need to be fought um you know publicly and a lot of a lot of people need to use their voice in that way but I think that art music um you know certain forms of expression it's it's important to while not trying to hurt anybody intentionally to, to speak your truth. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm just some queer weirdo up here in the woods. Like I'm doing my best. Guys, aren't you? Like I'm doing my best. 
Well, and that's what we need is creative people that'll just make us laugh and think a different way and see the lighter side of things. Like, that's why I love that stuff, because it doesn't always have to be so deep and heavy. And people, we see enough of that. You know, you turn on the news. That's why I just, I avoid the news. And I am on my way to avoiding social media, even though I have a podcast and everything. I just, it's old. It's old news anymore. I'm so tired of the falseness of it and just, I don't know, it just doesn't even seem real anymore. But anyway, so, um, I mean, I think it's really important. This is like a message that I, I try to, to say to the people in my life, especially younger people, um, you know, that you can curate your experience. You don't have to interact with anything that makes you uncomfortable or angry. Um, if you're using the internet, like for, like most of us are, I think to zone out or to, to be distracted from, <laughs> the soul crushing reality of nine to five work <laughs> or whatever, um, you could curate your own experience. Cause there's enough stuff out there that you can't escape from that we do have to, you know, face and, and reckon with uh, morally and otherwise. So yeah, curate your own experience, man. Sh- quit Facebook. That's like, that has been better for my mental health than Zoloft. So oh, yeah, well, I believe it a hundred percent. So what does your family think about your drawings? <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I'm kind of an orphan. Uh, people who are who are left, uh, they're wonderful. You know, <laughs> my dad, my dad, um, my dad could not be more different from me. I could not be more different than my father, although we look identical, which is weird. Um, <laughs> he just you know he he's he's very supportive it's wonderful I it's nice to finally do something that you can be proud of (laughs) (laughs) but everybody else is pretty is pretty much like oh she's she's doing something weird that's yeah it's pretty (laughs) on brand totally (laughs) at least she's not like you know moving across the country at random or you know right another pet um (laughs) I'm lucky I'm very very lucky that the family that I have the few that there are um are very supportive and, and wonderful yeah, I don't see them ever, and they're pretty okay with that. So. <laughs> well, how do you get your ideas? Like, do they just because I know they're like pets drawing? So, is a lot of it because of pets that you have? Like, the just the instances that come up. I saw the cat with the medicine one that was really funny. Oh, my God, uh, yeah. oh yeah, slobber tentacles. Yeah, he, he's, he's a hot mess. We, if I even told you like what happened with that, I, I'm. <laughs> There are some things that I have trouble uh, drawing about, and and um, <laughs> and it it appears that skin fungus is one of them. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm I'm always you know I'm always looking at at other art that I find funny. Um, I love memes. I love I you know I think yeah. it's probably very contradictory to be like well curate your own experience, but I love meme culture and um, and I think growing up with the internet becoming, you know, it it wasn't so toxic when I first got on, I don't think. And there were so many funny things like, um, you know, obviously the oatmeal, Natalie D toothpaste for dinner, um, all these (laughs) different web comics, uh, that really shaped, um, really shaped my sense of humor, I think as a, as a kid. And now it's just like, I'm always looking at different people making art and different people making jokes and, um, and just, you know, struggling with, with <laughs> incurable mental illness and sleep issues and too many animals and you know, <laughs> the, the inspirations everywhere, really. Life is hilarious. You know, yes. like, I really think it's like, especially if you're, if you're coming from a place where you're not uh, enduring some sort of trauma on a daily basis, but if you are domestically, I think it's even possible to, to find the humor and just the ridiculousness of it. Um, you know, cause otherwise uh, for me personally, like if you, if I just sit around and I'm like, God, like the world is a mess, my right. life's a mess. I'm incapable of leaving the house. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just going to make it worse. But if I try to find the humor in it, and I think if others try to find the humor in it, it makes survival a little bit easier. So do you have a job? Like a, a real, I don't want to say a real job. <laughs> Mom, um, do I have a job? Uh, no, this is my job. Uh, this is- I love that. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations. I, I, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I quit my full time job. Oh, I want to say two years ago. I want to. Oh say two years my ago. gosh. Yeah, yeah. So that's really- that's awesome. Okay, so what's up for you? What what's coming up for you then? Um, oh man. Uh, so <laughs> I have a calendar coming out. Um, with Andrews McNeil. That'll be for sale uh, over the summer, I believe, August. And I will, of course, like be 
shouting about presale when that happens. Um, and I have a book that will be coming out after that, that I'll awesome. of course talk more about uh, closer to its release date. But yeah. Is it the calendar, is it like a daily or is it? <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. So you just tear it off. Yep. Oh my God. I love that. And it's, I think it's like heavy enough that you could throw it at another coworker that you don't <laughs> can cause some damage. So yeah, use it as a takeaway. Is your book just your drawings or is it about you? Uh, it is, <laughs> it's not, a, it's not, well, I mean, it's all about me, right? Yeah, right. The world revolves around me. Now, um, <laughs> it's a story uh, based on, on my what I hope is is relatable but my experiences with uh not wanting to be around people so it's kind of like a antisocial field guide oh interesting yep. have you always been um creative as far as writing and drawing and all that stuff have you always been artsy like that man, it feels so pretentious to be like, yeah, I came out and I just was doing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, it's the only thing that, um, it's the only thing I know how to do halfway, like proficiently or not even proficiently. Cause obviously my drugs are terrible, but, uh, <laughs> I, I do it often enough that I can't stop. Like I, I always say that if, you know, if it all ended tomorrow, if, if again, like Instagram went down, if all of a sudden somebody decided to cancel buttholes on the internet or whatever right right I, I would still I would still draw and I would still write I would still do that so yeah so there's not just going to be one book there's you have more books in you <laughs> that will come out hopefully hopefully I mean unless they come out with some sort of incredible um SSRI that just, just <laughs> boring and <laughs> tired and capable of sleeping yeah yeah. yeah. So are your friends, are they like, um, oh, here, I have an idea. Draw this. Or, <laughs> oh, I thought of something funny this morning. Do this. Totally. Totally. <laughs> Which is great. It's great. I mean, I can't, I, I don't, I don't think that I ever um, produce something that's <laughs> what they're hoping for. I think they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah. yeah. And I'm, I, I love that. If anybody, anybody, I don't care if I know you in person or not, like, just send me suggestions. I love that. I love that. Yeah, because there you can find sources everywhere. I love that. And and there's always things where I'm like, that needs to be on a t-shirt. So I love that there's t-shirts out there that you're getting made with your stuff on it. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. I I mean I should shout out Threadless because they've been an incredible collaborator. Um so shout out Lance Threadless. <laughs> That's awesome. Is it just you? Do you have a a team of people? Oh, uh, for, for creating stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just all you? It's, it's me. I, I mean, it's again, like this makes me sound so like pretentious and stuck up, but, uh, fortunately, um, I now have like an agent and, um, and the places where I sell things, I obviously like had contacts that reached out to me to set up shops. Yeah. And stuff. Um, and y you know, so basically now I have people that help like, you know, which is good because I, I would never be able to, uh, make anything without, without somebody pushing me. I mean, I, I didn't even think that, um, the calendar when, when that was proposed to me, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was spam. So oh. poor, poor guy had to, to like stalk me <laughs> for two months and be like, hello, <laughs> I'm a real person. And this is a real company. And we would really like this. And I was like, this seems sus to me. <laughs> Just read this. Over is there an IP tracker? Like, yeah. But I think it's, um, I don't think you sound pretentious at all. I think you sound really humble and probably it's just like, wow, I didn't think that what I was doing was going to end up me needing an agent, you know, but, but you, we all need people to help us. You couldn't do it all yourself all the time. So this is great that you have people that want to back you up and get your name out there. And I think it's phenomenal. So just, it's great to be humble, but be proud of yourself too. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. It's hard to feel like I'm humble when I'm on a podcast being asked questions. <laughs> I just do really, really bad art. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm happy that I got through your little filter on your social media because honestly, like I wasn't looking at your numbers at all. I was looking at your drawings and I was just like, I, I have to meet her. I have to meet the person behind this. So I feel just so happy that I got to actually talk to you. This is just amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what about, uh, how long have you been making podcasts? 
I've been doing this, um, it'll be two years in February, and I started it as a uh, podcast about doing hair and being behind the chair and all the crazy stuff that people talk about drawings that could be made. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) There's a lot of inspiration there, but um, yeah, I started it off as that, and then I ended up retiring because I hurt my elbow, so I was just like, after 30 years, I thought, you know what, I'll just throw in the towel, but I didn't want to stop doing the podcast. So I thought I'll just talk to whoever I want to talk to as far as, you know, things that interest me. And I love comedy. I love people. So I just love, I just love interacting with people. I'm opposite of you. (laughs) I I reach (laughs) out for people. When I tell you that, that, um, getting my hair done, uh, used to be like one of the more stressful experiences that I would have to undergo back when I lived on Long Island to just pretend to be one of those girls uh, to walk yeah. in and be like, yeah, no, things are great. And yeah, no, I'm dating. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't do that. So I give you so much credit. And also, I don't think um, that, that I, I don't know if the term hairdresser, because I used to be a massage therapist. So I oh. to the fact of like, you can't call me a masseuse. Like, really, that's not okay. <laughs> I don't know if hairdresser's okay. But hairdresser's I, totally fine. It's that it's a very physical job. That's a very physical, like you got retired out of it because of an injury, like you're right. And people are like, it's just hair. No, No, it's so physical and mental. It (laughs) is so mental. I mean, I know when (laughs) I get a massage, I don't talk. So I just relax and enjoy. But when that's why I picked it, (laughs) literally was like on a job where nobody's going to talk to me. And I thought people fall asleep in massages. If I get good enough at that, I won't have to talk to anybody and I could get paid for it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stylists though that don't talk, you know, they are in the zone and they are doing their art and that's their way. And I felt like my hands would not move if my mouth wasn't moving. I find that terrifying. Somebody with a sharp object dead (laughs) silent around my head. Like, what's happening? What are you doing? Why are you? But Um, yeah. And for clients, you know, that don't want to talk, they just want to come in and relax. Poor them, because I am like a reporter, and they would sit down. I'd be like, "Where are you from? What do you do? What?" So yeah, there's somebody for everybody out there. There's a stylist for everyone. (laughs) Not for me. My hair is junky, but all right. I used a splat dye the other day. So now my entire bathroom looks like I just took Kool-Aid and sprayed it everywhere. Oh my God. Very... Well, that's the artist in you. That's no, the... no, no, it's, it's, it's absolutely not. It's me being like incapable of precision. <laughs> yeah. Incapable of precision. And so do you have anybody famous that follows you? Um, <laughs> that I, this is funny. Um, I am a big MMA fan, which is weird, uh, but I, I absolutely love MMA. And Esther Lynn is a photographer for uh, boxing events and MMA events, and she followed me, and it was the greatest moment of my life. Um, <laughs> Shout out Esther Lynn of MMAfighting.com and others. Uh, She's an incredible photographer. So she's somebody who I consider famous that I knew. Of course. And uh, and Matt Frivola, who's a fighter from Long Island, who's amazing. Um, Both of them follow me. And that's my version of famous, okay? Yes. No, I love that. You're my version of famous. If it's somebody (laughs) that I can see and I'm like, well, they make stuff. I like what they make. That's famous to me. So I love it. I think it's phenomenal. Um, Are you doing anything big for the holidays? Oh, yes. Sleeping. Um, I am. (laughs) Let let me, you know, if if I can drop a piece of advice. Yes. Yes. Don't do anything on holidays. Don't. Don't do it. Unless, like, you have, I guess if you have children, this you can't do that. That's very cool. <laughs> just but, leave. <laughs> yeah, just like, bye. I'm going away from you. No, I am, Santa. <laughs> I have adopted a, a policy of not going anywhere on uh, any major holidays uh, and just just being at home and enjoying um my my little bubble family in my little house and and enjoying nature and not interacting with the world and just kind of um doing the opposite of what I was raised to believe was the right thing to do for holidays. Yeah. 
drink too much, throw a fit, maybe start a fight and, uh, and get a really bad hangover for Christmas. So (laughs) I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the cat some gifts and, uh, spend some time with my partner and, and that's really it. What about you? I love it. Um, I'm doing the opposite. This I'm going to be around all the people. Um, but that's, you know, I I loved your, um, I'm dreaming of a spite Christmas. I I just laugh so hard. Even if I'm opposite of it, I still appreciate all of the humor of it. I just think it's hilarious and I cannot wait to air this. I want everybody to follow you. I think everything that you put out there is just so relatable, so fun so genuine and authentic and completely my jam. So I am thrilled that you agreed to be on my podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yes. Well, Ainsley, it's been a pleasure. I will put everything in the show notes so people know how to find you. And in August when, or before you're getting ready to promote, if you want to come back on and, and tell everybody and promote it on here, you're more than welcome to come back. I'd love to have you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Dawn. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.